uh, We Are Artist Works, an online music instruction company, and we work with uh, 36 world-renowned musicians. They're master musicians, and um, sometimes we invite their friends in, and that's what we've done today. Um, but the artist from Artist Works uh, that we're going to be talking with and hearing from today is Dave Stryker, and he is our jazz guitar teacher, and there's lots more for you to learn about Dave, uh, including his brand new CD that is called Blue Soul. Uh, and his collaborator, Bob Mincer, is going to be joining us, uh, as well as one of his bandmates from a long time ago and continues to be his bandmate is Jared Gold. So we're going to be talking to all of those people, I'm so happy to say. But we always start the top of the show, so to speak, uh, with a little bit of a tribute to the people who are on the front lines during this awful pandemic, and also to honor those people uh, who have been sick, uh, or have loved ones that have lost their lives. So Dave Stryker is going to get us started out this evening uh, and in honor and tribute to those who have been impacted by this pandemic. Uh, he's going to play Somewhere of the Rainbow for us. So here is Dave Stryker. <laughs> That was great. Yay. Yay. Appla virtual applause. Virtual applause. <laughs> these guys so, have these guys have to applaud. They're my friend. They're my friends. It's required, right? It required yeah. participation. Uh, so I think everybody's looking at the same screen I'm looking at. Dave Stryker is in your upper right hand corner. He has his name typed in there, so that's a dead giveaway. <laughs> And then Bob Mincer in the lower right-hand corner, and Jared Gold has been able to join us as well. Um, Dave, you know you know these people even better than I do, of course. Why don't you introduce your friends? Sure. Uh, I'll start with Jared. Jared is a uh, plays in my group for the last ten years, and uh, he's one of the best organ players uh, on the scene today. Uh, plays Hammond B three organ, and. Um, We've made a lot of records together, and he I've been on a bunch of his records. And what can I say? I think he's one of the best and a uh, good friend of mine. So, you know, got a Mets shirt on there. Yeah, that's a good that's a good thing. And I have to say that 
really, I love a lot of instruments, but Jared, one of my truly favorite ones is the Hammond B3. And I'm so, and you play it so well. I love listening to you. You played at uh, the Blue Note here in Napa. Yeah. And uh, oh, it was really just wonderful. And yeah, that, that, was, that was when we had gigs. I loved that. That was fun. <laughs> Way back then. I know. It's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. So, uh, Bob. Let's introduce yeah. Bob, Dave. Yeah, Bob, and Bob Minster really doesn't need any introduction. Bob is one of the one of the greats of this music. Um, I've known about Bob since I moved to New York. I guess I moved to New York in around 1980, but I actually the first time I heard Bob was in Omaha, Nebraska, at um, a place called the Howard Street Tavern. He was playing with Buddy Rich, and this must have been in the mid to late 70s, and. So, you know, he was killing it back then. And then when I came to New York, you know, of course, I, I heard his group a lot. And then I heard him, he played with um, with uh, Jocko Pistorius. That was a pretty amazing band, the word, uh, band that they had together. And and Bob's always been a composer, arranger, had his own big band. Um, he's been with the Yellow Jackets now for over 30 years, I think. And... Um, He's also runs the his jazz department at USC and is the chief con, ra, arranger for the WDR big band in Cologne. So if any of us think that we are busy, we just have to look at Bob. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Think a, again, a, right? Kind of amazing. <laughs> kind of an amazing guy. And, and besides all that, he's, a, he's, a, he's like one of the nicest cats, man. So Oh, yeah. that's such a nice thing to say. Um, so maybe let's go back a little more, uh, chronologically. I, you've been together with these guys for a while. Um, maybe talk a little bit about the CDs that you've made with both of these guys, or maybe let's actually, let's change that. Jared, why don't we ask you a little bit about that? Maybe you can talk to us sure. a little bit about some of the collaborations you've had, uh, with Mr. Stryker. Wow. Uh, I mean, it goes way back. I, I met Dave, uh, maybe 15 more than 15 years ago i don't know we, we we started playing at a club called cecil's in new jersey uh owned by the great cecil brooks third great drummer mm -hmm. and uh i think dave heard me play there or something like that wow it's so, it's so long i can't remember <laughs> i have a five-month-old and a five-year-old i'm lucky i can remember oh my gosh before. but anyway um yeah we started playing with a, a great drummer tony Reedus, and uh that trio recorded a bunch of records and Unfortunately, Tony passed, but um, uh, a great drummer, McClinney Hunter, took over, and, and he's been in the group since, and, and we've done so many records that, you know, it feels like one or two a year, and, and of course, the 8-track uh, the, uh, the CDs, the series, that there's three and a half of them, the half being the Christmas one, um, <laughs> but uh, that's been really successful, and, and we've had a lot of fun on, on those particular projects, because we get to you know, take these amazing songs that, that, you know, Dave lived through. I, I, I can't say that I lived through them, but I love them. Um, and we kind of rework them a little bit and, and, and that's been, that's been super fun. And, and of course the, we had, we've, uh, Bob was on one of the CDs we did and he did a, Dave did a tribute to Stanley and, and got a chance to play with Bob on that. And, and, uh, man, <laughs> Yeah, playing with, playing with these two cats. You know. Yeah, that's some good. That's some good music. And Bob, I've I've heard you play too. Um, it wasn't in Napa though, was it in Healdsburg? Maybe Dave. That's right. Where Bob was playing, of course, playing saxophone. Um, so let's hear a little bit from Bob. Tell me about. Uh, to give me some. Give me some dirt on Dave. <laughs> well, <clears throat> Dave's a great musician. Uh, terrific guy. Um, we did meet in New York. I don't, I don't remember exactly when, probably in the 80s. I know Dave had a band with uh, a neighbor of mine, Steve Slagle, and, and a great saxophonist. And um, I don't know, we, we would cross paths on the trail uh, a, reg in, a regular amount, I guess. And then um, a few years ago, uh, Oh, I know what happened. We um, we put together a quartet to play at the Jazz Education Network conference 
I forget, it might have been in Louisville, I don't remember exactly where it was, but I think it was Peter Erskine, John Clayton, Dave and myself, just we threw this quartet together and played and it, it was really fun. So um, Dave called and asked if I would, you know, play some gigs with his group and uh, I, I was pleased to do so. And uh, I guess the last few years we played a little bit together. Yeah. Whenever I can, and uh, we did the uh, tribute to Stanley Tarantino, as Jared mentioned, and then um, <clears throat> I became the chief conductor of the WDR Big Band in Cologne, and uh, bringing Dave over as a guest was a logical thing to do, and uh, since we had a relationship already, I just thought his music would lend itself nicely to the Big Band instrumentation, so we made uh, the, the record, Blue Soul. And uh, yeah, it's been great yeah. hanging and playing with Dave and Jared, who's also yeah, an amazing musician. I need to I need to have you all together in one place. Although I like going to the Blue Note and I like going to the Hillsburg Jazz. It'd be nice to have you guys all together on one stage. We would definitely bring out a crowd for that. I, I promise you, <laughs> it'd be good well, stuff. We were supposed to uh, be at Monterey this year uh, ah. with this group. And uh, it looks like we'll be postponing that for a year because of this uh, situation we find ourselves in. And um, Yeah, it's weird. It is. Uh, but uh, we all look forward to uh, when we can get on stage and play for people again. Yeah, you bet. Well, you've got some fans here, and people want to say hello. So um, George has been around with us for, for quite a while, um, and he happens to like Jared's shirt. <laughs> He's a Mets fan, George Cole. <laughs> um, and then somebody wants to say hello to Jared. Uh, Pamela, I don't know Pamela. I hope you do. <laughs> I do. Hey, Pamela, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah, she... uh, I'm sorry, were you going to say something? No, no, she, uh, she was at one of the churches where I used to play, so she was a, a singer in the choir oh. that I used to direct. So Very nice. Yeah. Of folks from Pennsylvania. I'm from Pennsylvania. I'm sorry, I don't know Mark, but I'm glad that you're here. Um, and some uh, Mike is from North Carolina. We'd like to get everybody's name up there because they've taken the moment to say hello. And Barry Hall. And um, here's a guitar player from Brazil saying hello. And then Joshua's from Montreal. Tudo bem. We to home. <laughs> Oh, dear. I hope that wasn't uh, anything bad there, Dave. Not at all. <laughs> okay, good. So, Actually, uh, Jared is Jared speaks fluent Portuguese. He married a Brazilian woman. He met on one of my gigs. Yeah, our, our first is trip to Brazil, really? I, I met my wife on the plane. So I, I owe it all to Dave, I guess, everything in my life. Yeah, those two <laughs> kids. <laughs> yep, that's for sure. Oh, my that's goodness. Sure. We're just going to put a couple more up here. Um Gabrielle oh. wanted to say hello to Bob. Yeah, hey Gabriele, he's a, a an old friend, a wonderful musician from the Milan area. We've worked together a lot. He has a big band over there in Italy, and just the real instigator of the music. Fantastic guys. Okay, Good well he's you. he's joining us today and mm -hmm. wanted to make sure he said hello. <laughs> hello. Um, so. Um, there are some questions coming in right now. I'm going to let them go ahead and, and, you know, keep asking their questions and then we'll put them up there. So don't be shy. Uh, that's what we're here for, to ask questions and hear some music. Um, I don't think that Bob is going to be playing today, but Jared, uh, I think you're set up to do some playing and I would love to hear some Hammond B3. Yeah, absolutely. What, what would you like to play for us? Um, I'll play a song called Everything I Love. Okay, great. Uh, this is actually off of one of Dave's unreleased albums that I guess will be out fairly soon. Excellent. Let me put the microphone on the organ. Excuse me. We haven't even done a sound check with Jared yet, but he's he's been a trooper here. Jared, any way to any way to make the uh so we can see the keys on the Probably computer? Probably not. There you ah, go. Ah, okay. Oh, and look at the toys. That looks like something fun, a roller coaster. Those are Jared's actually. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Good? Yeah, maybe a little, a little more. louder. A little, a little louder. louder. Thank you. 
Great. Yay! Beautiful. Again, virtual applause, virtual applause. <laughs> now you're, all of our guests are enjoying it as well. So th thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, thank you. So, yes, you're welcome. Um, we do have a question, and I think this is really for everybody, um, all three of you. Tell us about how you're working with others during this social distan distancing. And this is a question that's come up quite a bit. And I've been intrigued to find from a lot of people that I've spoken with on these dispatches from home that they've been really busy. Uh, and I just tell me a little bit, Dave, about what you've been doing in terms of collaboration and being creative during kind of a difficult time when we're a little bit disconnected. What's happening with you? <coughs> well, I just finished, uh, like Bob, uh, we both teach at universities. Bob's at USC, um, actually runs the program there. And I teach at Indiana University as well as Rutgers and as Montclair State. So um, we finished the semester out. We had to go on, uh, you know, go to uh, online learning. Uh, all, and so it was a kind of a, for me anyway, it was, you know, took a minute, a learning curve, but uh, we the students were good, you know, we're good about it and and we made it work and um you know it's what you miss is the fact of playing together uh they the yeah oh <laughs> there for a minute you you didn't move but um i can see you now i can see you now so okay. go ahead well if i <laughs> If I faint, if I faint, just uh, I thought you fell off your bar stool or something. No, I I'm. Didn't I didn't change anything. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah. So it was. It was. Uh, we don't get to play together. Yeah. Uh, which is is part of the you know what you want to do when you're teaching a lesson. At least that's how I approach it. Um, playing with my guitar players, and uh, so what we have to do is uh, more. Of, you know, I have them play and. Uh, then I play and we demonstrate things and we can play with a backing track and they mm -hmm. can send in a recording, which has been a good thing, you know, for them to have to uh, do that and hear themselves, um, even if it's not a, you know, a recording studio, but to hear, you know, hear yourself playing, it's very telling sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's been, uh, you know, we, that's kind of what I've been doing up till now is, is finishing up the semester at the schools and waiting to see what's going to happen uh, going forward, and um, you know, it's uh, also at Artist Works. You know, I I, I have my sure. online school there, and I, uh, you know, for guitar we kind of have an orchestra right here in our hands. So we I feel lucky in that regard. In that you know, I can work on playing uh, you know so, solo guitar and chord melody type things, and we can work on that. But we do super really miss playing with others that's what that's what we're all into and maybe Go bob ahead. you could you could talk a little bit about you know how you what you've been doing with the yeah about teaching and and also if you're doing anything creative or helping people i don't know are you recording any tracks or tell us uh, what you're doing well 
Um, I'm, I'm pretty busy. I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, the the difference is, I I don't have to travel. And um, before this whole thing hit, uh, I I was beyond busy. I mean, between traveling with the Yellow Jackets and being over in Germany, and teaching full time, uh, that was a real mouthful. And I I think. I've, I've come to the realization that uh, maybe I was working a little too hard. Yeah. And, uh, th- this has been nice. Uh, I, I I don't feel like I'm sitting around. I mean, I'm I'm working on a, a project for the WDR that was postponed until December with four tenor saxophonists. So at a leisurely pace, doing those arrangements, I have to do ten big band arrangements for that project. Wow. Um, Yellow Jackets are talking about doing a new recording at a certain point. We have something that's going to be released in the fall, uh, again, with the WDR Big Band that we're really excited about. Hmm. And, um, I, you know, the online teaching thing was, was a revelation, I think, both for students and teachers alike. It really forced us to change the way we look at things and to focus differently. Uh, like Dave mentioned, you know, there was the uh, option of having students play solo, play by themselves. And when you take the rhythm section away, suddenly there, you know, the microscope is sort yeah. of focused on different aspects of playing as in, you know, time and form and clarity and so on. So, um, even, I mean, I direct the big band at USC and we had a lot of fun, even though we weren't actually playing together. Uh, we we did some research projects. We checked out the Benny Goodman 1938 Carnegie Hall concert. That was a revelation to a lot of the students. Very important concert, and they all you know studied the music and wrote on it. And wrote wrote uh, you know, papers. We looked at the Duke Ellington Far East Suite. Um, we had the students writing things, and you know I showed them things I was working on and. Uh, we, we had listening sessions where everybody came together and brought in uh, a couple of pieces of music that they felt strongly about. And that was that was great. I mean, it was I you know, we all learned a lot from one another. Yeah, so it was a nice experience. Um, I played on a fun thing last week. Uh, there's a bunch of guys in Paris. They have a big band called the Paris Jazz Big Band and uh, Pierre Bertrand, very, very fine arranger and saxophonist, put together this thing. Um, it's just uh, players from all over the world. He did an arrangement of the L O V E, and uh, oh, it was, nice! It was big fun, you know. It was it just yeah. it felt great. It was just a real positive, uplifting project. And uh, this, I mean, this whole thing has really shown me that I need to get my home recording <laughs> scene <laughs> more together because it's not together at all. I, I, you know, it's a but good tool to have. Yeah. It is. I mean, I you know, my focus has been elsewhere. I, I, you know, I do a lot of orchestrating, a lot of big band arranging and teaching and live playing. And uh, now that that's, you know, has changed dramatically, I see that um, yeah. that's one of my projects for the summer is working on uh, logic and home recording. There you so, go. Yeah, there's plenty to do. Plenty there to do. is plenty to do. Jared, what have what have you been up to? I know. Well, you've got two right. children. Yeah. Well, be, besides the twelve-hour day of watching my kids, um, <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I, I, I feel kind of lucky that, and I, and I'm sure, um, you know, nowadays, I, I hope, hopefully, most musicians realize, professional musicians realize. I mean, you have to be diversified. Obviously, you know, with it, it's tough if you're just surviving on gigs and and something, you know, incredibly unfortunate like this happens. Um, all of a sudden, your your life stops, but I personally, um, you know, besides recording and gigging, I have my own business where I uh, I make folding organs, portable bass pedals, you know, wow. uh, portable benches. It's called JG3 Tech. And, you know, for some reason, since the pandemic hit, business has doubled. So I don't know why wow. that is. Maybe everybody's at home and they need, a, like Bob said, they need their own home studio. They need their own home recording facility, whatever it is. So. So that's been keeping me super busy. Um, and uh, me and Dave and McClinney have been trying to put out a virtual trio song maybe once, uh, once every two weeks or once every week and a half um, on Dave's Facebook page. So 
people can check that out. Um, there's a there's a trombone player I play with by the name of David Gibson. He has a an organ nonet, um, and we've put together some virtual tracks that he's going to be releasing soon. So, trying to be creative, um, you know, not forgetting that that you know you still every day you want to you want to get better at your instrument and and of course playing for people is is important and it's fun um but just uh just trying to you know respect the music and, and get better every day um and yeah and watch my kids for 12 hours That's yeah and watch your kids i knew you were going to get that back in there but it, well, it's on my mind <laughs> i know but that's good i know i i hope that your children are healthy and doing okay today um and i hope their I, father is healthy <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd be healthy if the Mets were playing every day. I'll tell you that. Even without. Family. Oh, I know it. Yeah, everything that. has changed. Everything has changed. But I do kind of wonder what um, what's going to perpetuate now. And Bob really touched on this. I think best out of what all of us have said, and that is, hey, I realize things. I, I'm able to realize something now that I'm home and actually have a moment to catch my breath. And I kind of wonder what's going to perpetuate. What's going to keep happening? You know, when we are finally reopened and back, back to our world, you know, what's going to stay with us? Online education, I hope. <laughs> but, you know, is there anything, Dave, in your life that you've done during this time that you want to make sure continues? Um, Maybe it's not. Just, it's all <laughs> right now. It's all uh, I'm just trying to stay positive. Uh, yeah. You know, I can speak for all of us musicians. It's it's pretty overwhelming to see all your uh, all your gigs disappear, basically for a year. You know, for the the rest yeah. of the year, uh, we 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 work hard to um, to to book gigs. You know, we're not. You know, I know a lot of my peers are. Uh, we have to work. You know, every gig is a is a uh, takes a fair amount of work. You know from getting the gig in the first place and then, you know, all the, all the logistics and keeping a band together. And, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's pretty devastating for us as, yeah. as musicians. Luckily, you know, like Bob, I, you know, Bob and myself have, or, you know, I feel uh, blessed in a way to have, uh, other outlets, you know, teaching. Um, and I, I enjoy teaching, you know, I was lucky to, uh, get to play with some of the great players of the music, you know, Jack McDuff and Stanley Turrentine and others. And so I feel like, I, I you know, I want to pass on what I have was given. And yeah. th that, that's one of the things I love about teaching. And and like a site like Artist Works, where I teach at, you know, like you just mentioned a guy from Brazil. There, people are coming from Australia, you know, mm -hmm. you know, Japan, all over the world, uh, Germany. You know, and, and all of a sudden, you know, here you are, you know, we're connecting through music uh, right on the on the on the on the online school there at Artist Works. And uh, so it's, you know, music is a great thing. Um, th but I guess I would just say I'm try I want to try to stay positive and uh, and uh, Jared, you know, I know uh, Jared said he's got his business and Bob's, you know, always busy. Uh, I, I want to say one thing, you know, this new record I have out. um I'm so thankful to Bob, you know, he's, I really want people to check this record out because it's like, it's so killing. Uh, I remember when we, you know, Bob, we had a, like a whole bunch of tunes and, and we went, kind of went through them and Bob, you know, picked the ones he thought he could do something with. And, and I would ask him, I'd say, well, you know, what's, how's it going on, on, on this? And he said, well, I'm, I'm flying to Japan with the yellow jackets and, <laughs> I'm gonna write. Uh, I'm gonna fi write this one on the way there, and then I'm gonna finish this one on the way back. So, so this guy is, <laughs> this guy is like amazing, man. He uh, yeah. and we're, I don't think he had a keyboard. I think he does this all in his head and on a laptop, right, Bob? That's well, right. no, is that true, Bob? <clears throat> that is true. Oh my goodness! Wow, you're yeah. like a Superman. I have a virtual keyboard in my brain. I'll bet you do. Oh my gosh. Um, so is it hard for you then to, it must, well, I'm answering my own question. It must not be that hard for you to collaborate at a distance because you don't need that keyboard. You're able to, to, 
to create what you need to create in your mind without having a keyboard. Is that true or no? Um, I, I don't use a keyboard actually for convenience more than anything. I mean, when I, I like to write on airplanes because it makes the trip go by faster. Well, hey, Bob, if you need a folding keyboard, just let me know. Okay. <laughs> you have one that's about four inches by two inches? I, I, I can make you one, yeah. Okay. He can do it. Right. I'll take he can it. do it. we got to get the name yeah. of that website, too. Yeah. But go go ahead, Bob. Anyway, <laughs> I, I wanted I, – I, the laptop is about all that will fit, you know, in a coach seat. I mean, so I uh, rather than have an external keyboard, which a lot of people use for a variety of functions, I like to do everything on the laptop, and I've gotten yeah. fairly proficient at it. That's and, great. Uh, I love to write. It's it's you know it's a puzzle. It's challenging. It's fun. I get lost in it, and um, it's something I've been doing for a long time. I, I just I enjoy it a lot. So uh, well, we don't want you to quit anytime soon. So we're no, happy to see what no. comes out of you next. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and thankfully, I, I think Jared said a very important thing, which is diversification, and that's something we all you know, as, as human beings need to consider, you know, just w so that we're doing a variety of things, you know, no, number one, it keeps life interesting, but number two, it keeps you engaged and, and thinking and active and doing stuff and being stimulated intellectually and in, in the case of playing music physically. And um, I know at USC, we sort of advocate uh, a, being a triple threat, being a good player, a good composer, arranger, and a good teacher. And I would add to that, you know, some, somebody well-versed in technology uh, as well so that you can record yourself and video yourself. And uh, now more than ever, I think those skills are, are really very important. I was just talking um, last evening with Katerina Lichtenberg and Jason Vio, and we were talking about how students learn right now in this situation and one of the things that we talked about is uh, recording yourself and just you know even if it's at artist works or not submitting a video to your teacher is is a great thing to do but what seems to be very edifying and enlightening is the actual recording of yourself and hearing yourself more objectively through that recording um and i just i wonder if you've ever done that I know Dave does it, but I wonder if either Jared or Bob, you ever do that with your students students, and, and kind of require them to record themselves. Yes. You do? I have my, I have my students do it, and I do it as well. Yeah. yeah it's very revealing. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for I mean, it, it, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, with any, you know, feel versus real. I mean, they, when I take golf lessons, they talk about feel versus real. What, what you feel and what, what, what it really is is, sometimes two different things and the only way you can you can know that sometimes is is unfortunately the hard process of listening back to yourself and yeah and editing that you know in that respect so yeah it, got it the truth is is sometimes painful <laughs> when you hear it <laughs> yeah i it's mean go ahead dave for, absolutely it's it's um it's some um, it's when you when you anytime you can spend in a studio or recording you know is is great time spent it's um you know just you 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 know it, it definitely can be painful but you also can hear you know is this is you know you hear is this what i want to be doing is this is this what i'm trying to project you know is my time is my time where i like it is my no ideas where i like it am i telling a story you know or am i just mm -hmm. playing a bunch of notes um so yeah re hearing yourself recorded is is definitely um a good a very good learning experience and can be humbling but uh the more you do it the better you get at it and you know and your level uh is you know is is you know will rise yeah and you yeah so people can i think that's a, a good uh I don't know, item on the to-do list for people that are home. And they don't need to show the video to anybody, but they they should at least record the audio and maybe record a video too and watch it. It's very enlightening. Um, we have a couple of questions. There's one here from Chris Baldwin, and, and this is specifically for Dave. Uh, can you see that, Dave, from where you are? I can. Okay. Sometimes the print is a little bit small. And for those of you who can't see it, I'll read it. It says, Dave... 
I know you have lessons on jazz of different levels. I was wondering if you will in the future teach how to use upper register chords in comping. That's an interesting question. Thoughts on actually, that? Actually, yeah, actually, um, that's uh, what I like to do is uh, use my capo and I just move it all the way up here, see? Oh. And then I can play my. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I was going right Dave, down that road. Dave is actually one of the best. I mean, I, I'm, you know, as an organ player, I've played with a ton of guitar players. He's one of the best compers. Um, I mean, just, I can speak from for, from an organ, organist's perspective, but yeah. he's an amazing comper. I mean, and you haven't you know, seen a music capo that far up the neck? Never. <laughs> okay. All right, Dave. Tell you, tell us how to do it. Well, um, yeah, I would. I'd be happy to go into uh, that kind of thing. But you know, I would say in general, though. In comping, uh, when you say high, um, you want to. I think you want to be more middle a lot of times because if you're playing too high or comping is 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 accompanying. You know, you, you're trying to uh, accompany a, who's ever the soloist or the singer, or whoever you're playing with. And if you're playing higher notes, those notes can get in the way of the melody they're playing or the solo ideas they're doing because the higher the note, uh, it's the more that it's going to um, come out louder mm. in a way because it's just the frequency. So like a lot of times if you're comping, you know, you want to just be playing like simpler, like on that tune that Jared played. Uh... just like thinking you know grooving with the time and and just kind of laying it down i call it you know if you're talking about playing up here you know it's you don't want to do that because it's whoever you're playing with is not going to dig it you're you know you, you got to be there for the music. So uh, I would I would play higher chords, you know, in a chord melody situation. But if I'm comping for somebody, I'm uh, I'm going to probably stay more in the middle register, the middle of the piano, the middle of the guitar. And you don't have to play a lot of notes. A lot of times, you know, Monk would play a C major seven like this. You know, just two notes, a C and a B. I mean, that's the best C major seven I ever heard. Um, yeah. So, but anyway, feel free to send me in a any kind of question like that on the on the on the side on here, and I'll, yeah. we'll go over it. We'll go over it. Great, um, thank you, Dave, for that answer. Um, this is a question for um, Bob. Uh, you mentioned playing with Peter Erskine, who, by the way, is the jazz drum teacher at Artist Works, uh, and John would like to know more about that project. Uh, I'm not sure what project. Uh, you just meant you mentioned Peter Erskine. Uh, I don't know, five minutes ago, six minutes ago, that you you were playing with Peter Erskine. Maybe it was early on. Uh, I might have I might have mentioned it. I can't remember. Oh, I thought yeah. Bob. Oh mentioned no, him. yeah, that's right. We played we a, a quartet. Jam with him. A quartet. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I, I've known Peter Erskine for fifty years. We met in uh -oh. nineteen. We met in nineteen sixty nine at the Interlochen Arts Academy, and we played there together, and our. Our careers sort of were parallel. We, uh, Peter joined um, the Stan Kenton Orchestra. I joined the Tito Puente Orchestra. Mm -hmm. Stan, uh, Peter then went to Maynard's band. I went to the Thad Jones Mel Lewis big band. And Peter joined Weather Report. And then I don't know what I was doing. I was doing stuff around New York. And then we both met up in Jaco Pastoris's band in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, Peter played on many of my own recordings i've done 20 big band records pete must be on 15 of them yeah uh we've done small group things together uh, i played on his records uh we we teach together at usc um, we play together as much as we can and he's a fantastic musician yeah he's a great ne guy needless to say. Yeah. yeah and an amazing teacher yeah he really is he's He's he sets the bar high. He really he yeah. really does. Um, so I'm just wondering. This is a, maybe a little bit of a challenge, but I wonder if maybe Dave and and Jared could 
trade off some sections of a tune and try to you can't play together but could we do something like that maybe i think that would be interesting to try you think jared okay this will be fun hey jared put the uh mic a little bit <laughs> close get a, we need a little more bass we, we need more bass. it is as close as it can get but okay it's all um, about the I'll, bass I can turn up a little bit more too <laughs> what are you gonna do dave have you guys talked about this do you know what you're doing uh no but <laughs> Okay. Let's let's play um, let's play shadow boxing. This is the tune that Bob arranged. Okay. That's that's actually on the. Uh, what's going on, Jared? Somebody. Uh, I hear somebody doing the dishes. Sorry. Is that? It's a oh, dispatch okay. from home. That's where we are. It's a dispatch right. from home. That's right. <laughs> um, from the kitchen. It's a dispatch from the kitchen. So anyway, this is a record, uh, a song of mine called Shadow Boxing. Okay. Bob, you cool? You cool? You got to get off, or are you all right? No, stay, uh, Bob. I'll stay for a second. Okay. If you if you if you if you if you jump off, Bob, it's okay. I know you, you're no. a busy man. Okay. And thanks thanks for coming, my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're welcome to stay. Man, this I'd is love on to the... play. I actually know this tune, but I, yeah, I don't you know how stay. that would how would that work? Well, You'd have to play by yourself. Do you want to play a chorus? Uh, yeah. Uh, get your saxophone. Come uh, on. Come on, you uh, can do it. Eric, I'm just going to say, Eric Marienthal did it. He did. Well, then I better do it, I guess. You better do it. That's right. All right Good. My... Yay. All right. Okay, so we're going to do... Tell us a little bit about this tune while we get Bob figuring out uh, where that a, saxophone this, is. This is a, a tune of mine. It's a, it's a minor blues. It's in C minor. It's, it's actually 14 bars. And uh, Bob just did the most arra amazing arrangement of this uh, he took, you know, just a 14 bar tune that I wrote and you got to buy the record or or check it out on on one of these streaming platforms. Um it's called Shadow Boxing. It's to see what Bob did with it. It was it's insane. What CD um, is that on, Dave? What what album or new, CD? It's well, it's it's on the new one, Blue Soul. Oh, it is. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, right. so this is going to be a tune from there. That's great. I I, I got to get that CD. I'm going to put that up there so everybody knows where to buy it. Because we all need to get this, we need to get it. Okay. All right. So, so, so here's here's what we could do. All right. Bob, you back? Not yet. He's not back yet. I think the dog is though. I hear him warming up. This is going to be exciting, folks. Those of you who are, you know, in the audience here, <laughs> this is completely, utterly unplanned. Who knows? We're here for the music, right? So we're going to we're going to give it a shot. We have no idea if it's going to work or not, but that's what you All can right, do. All right, so with... here's what here's oh, what we'll do. Here's a I'll play I'll play the melody and a chorus, so I'll play two I'll play two choruses. And then Jared, you got you play two choruses and then Bob, you play two choruses. Okay. All right? All right. Okay, and I'll conduct. Okay. Who's going first? You, Dave? I'll, I'll go first. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. All right, Bob, you got to wait. Can we, can, we can't play together. It's Aww. too much of a lag. Okay. All so right, just, so. I'll, I'll play two, Jared two, and, and Bob two. One, right. uh, 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 uh. Thank you. 
It all seemed like you were right in together. That was fun. So I have a question. Uh, yeah. Dave, when you were soloing, Jared, you were playing a bass line. No, no it's John no, Dave, I think you recorded something. Or, I don't, how'd you do that, Dave? Uh, I can't really tell. If, I, what, if what, I told you, I'd have to kill you. What devil stuff is that? Over there? <clears throat> I had a, I got a little, Bob, I have a little uh, looper pedal. I put a bass line down uh, earlier. Uh, ah. But I anyway. was hoping you had tucked John Patitucci in a corner somewhere or something like that. But no, I wish. You know, no. th there is software though that I just found out about um, that allows one, to, allows several people to play simultaneously. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Um, I think it's called Soundtrap or something like that. I, I have to do a little research. Hmm. But I, I mean, I think inevitably we'll be able to do this. Oh, I hope you're right. Yeah. I yeah, really right. Hope you're right. Then right we now. Never, then we'll never leave home. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody well, I, laughed. I, the, the um, you know, I don't know what that sounded like, but I'm sure it was pretty raggedy. But whatever. Oh, it was it's, fun. It was the idea was fun. It was there. But I feel uh, I really, man. I was t I Bob while you were getting your horn. I was just talking about um, you know how gassed I am about you know getting to 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 what you did with this record and, you know, arranged it. And I mean, the WDR big band is, um, is an incredible, you know, incredible orchestra out of uh, Cologne. It's a, it's a, it's a radio orchestra. I, I guess people in the United States would, wouldn't really even, I don't know, Bob, what would you, how would you describe it? It's, well, the closest thing, yeah, the closest thing to what the WDR band is in terms of what may ever have happened or is happening now, I guess, would be the Lincoln Center Jazz Orchestra. But right. in the 1950s, uh, there were uh, staff bands at the television stations at ABC, NBC, CBS, or NBC and CBS anyway. In fact, my wife's dad played, I think, at uh, NBC. Um, and so th that, that, of course, went away, I think, in the 60s. But uh, boy, what a great thing. There are there are four of those bands in Germany. 
And uh, Jim McNeely is, in, he's the conductor, chief conductor in Frankfurt. And I'm not sure who's in, um, in Hamburg right now, but um, I feel very fortunate to be working with this band in Cologne. They're, they're a great band. They're playing together all the time. So, you know, it really sounds like a band. And, uh, I, and I loved, loved arranging Dave's music. I mean, it's just, I love playing with Dave and Jared. Oh. And, uh, it was just, it made perfect sense to, uh, to do it with the band, you know, and they, they just, they stepped up and they make everything sound great. So boy, it was a real fun project. Well, isn't it true in that this big band specifically is supported by the taxes that people pay in Germany? I mean, what a concept supporting the arts. Yeah, it's, it's the way it works is if you own hardware as in a radio or television in Germany, you pay a monthly fee, uh, you know, you might think of it as a rental fee, but that money goes into a pot, which then subsidizes full time uh, musical groups. There's orchestras and choirs and uh, jazz big bands in four different cities. And it's, wow. yeah, I mean, you know, the arts are an integral and important part of daily life over there. And uh, they, you know, it's really reflected in the way they do things. Yeah, well, it's important here too, but it's just not supported enough. I mean, I don't mean to be complaining, but we really do need to support the arts. It needs to be part of everyone's life, you know. I agree. And I, I, I don't see that happening, <laughs> but well, still. Well, you know, if, when, if music were to go away, I think people would realize yeah. something very uh, substantial is missing. Yeah, from the fabric of our lives, that's for sure. No kidding. Well... Um, I just wanted to make sure that we have a moment to, I have put on the scroll here about the CD, um, and Dave, you said we can send everybody to, uh, davestriker.com, that's striker with a Y, uh, and the CD is Blue Soul, uh, and of course Bob Mincer plays on it, and the WD, um, WDR Orchestra also is, is WDR great. Big Band. I'm sorry, I have orchestra on there. Well, I can't fix it now, but I will fix it later. Um, there is a WDR orchestra. It's a symphony orchestra. Actually, there are two WDR symphony orchestras, but this is the WDR big band. All right, I'll fix it right now. But I want to know a little bit about um, Jared's f foldable organs. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been building organs for as long as I can remember, but um, you know, D Dave can probably remember. He's probably seen a lot of the different versions. But about, uh, I'd say, five or six years ago, I started a company called JG3 Tech, which is kind of a play on B3, like Hammond B3, and my name is Jared Gold. There you go, JG3. Um, and the website is jg3tech.com. But um, I, always, uh, I always wanted to have an instrument that I could bring as carry-on on an airplane um, so I wouldn't have to check it. That was my initial idea for the, my initial concept for the business. And... Um, so I built this organ that folds in half, and it fits in a in the, uh, the carry-on space up on the airplane. Um, and I expanded that to super lightweight, tiny bass pedals for an organ, a, a super portable folding bench. Wow! Um, I have other ideas for, you know, automatic carts that follow you and and carry your you know your equipment for you. So. Um, anyway, this, uh, I like that. The mind, the, the mind never call stops the turning, especially now. So. <laughs> so, what about a guitar? I, I was down in Nashville at uh, Project Music. Uh, down, uh, I, I was down in um, Nashville for Project Music, and uh, there was a gentleman there that had a foldable guitar, and it seemed like it really, really did work. So, you have that, wh right, What Dave? are your thoughts? He, he has that. I swear, I've seen. Who that has that, that? Dave? Right. Uh, well, they have. I have a, a Yamaha um, yeah. guitar that that kind of comes apart, but um, yeah, that's you know they uh, they they've got these instruments that are uh, you can take the neck off and stuff. I think, but uh, yeah. the, I have a you know I mean I you know you 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 kind of have get get the instrument that you like to play and uh, you know I I play this one a lot. This is a Gibson. Uh, 347 and I also play uh, uh, Benedetto I have a nice Benedetto a couple nice Benedettos I play and uh, like most guitar players I have uh, a lot of 
a lot of I don't instruments. think you're folding up a Benedetto anytime soon. No, but yet that's the thing. I mean, you know, you you, you got to to get the the beautiful sound, you need the the actual guitar. And, um but uh John, yeah, I used Jared's... To with, I'm sorry, Dave. I was just saying when I used to play with John Abercrombie, he used to use a guitar that Dave, what, what kind of guitar is that that had, doesn't have the uh the, the tuning pins a, maybe uh, well it's the first one was called a steinberger but um oh, yeah. i don't know what he he it's it's just uh, they it just it ends doesn't, there it ends yeah. here yeah yeah so it was, it was pretty small but uh didn't fold in half <laughs> yeah but anyway jared we've we've used that we've used that on gigs and recordings this and it sounds uh it sounds absolutely you know really great and so yeah enough about jared though <laughs> <laughs> Now, Jared, he's uh, he's one of the one of the uh, smartest guys I know. He's got a he's whatever he comes up with, it's going to be pretty cool. I think he sure plays great organ. And I want to say, to me. <laughs> I want to say, uh, sorry, thank you. Thank I want to say thanks to Jared and and Bob for joining me today uh, on this. Um, and I want to thank you, Patricia, for all you're doing at Artist Works. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Artist Works has uh, every instrument. Uh, you know, just the greatest uh, teachers and and players. Uh, everything from you know classical, country music, blues, jazz. Uh, it's a great, it's a great company. They're really great people. And uh, thank you, you know, for for asking us to come on and uh, talk a little bit during this uh, uh, pandemic we find ourselves in when things are so kind of. Uh, uncertain you know right now in the for world sure. it's nice to uh that you would pr provide a forum for us just to to talk about a few things and and maybe some people listening in uh, got something out of it too you know no, thanks thank for doing it yeah, yeah it's my pleasure dave i love doing these things i have a blast and it's i i like that it, we have a lot of people joining us and asking questions and just saying hello from wherever they live but I, I realized uh, when I was on with Howard Levy uh, last week or maybe the week before, it's all running together now, that he said, this is a, it's a window for me too. You know, it's an, it's yeah. an opening for me to the world because he's just as sequestered as the rest of us. So I'm really happy to have all, all three of you guys joining us today. And Bob, thank you for getting out the saxophone and, and joining the musical conversation. And Jared, it's um, always a pleasure to hear you play and, uh, thank you all for joining us. And to those of you who are out there listening, um, we've talked about a couple of things here this evening. I want to make sure that you remember. And one is Dave's new CD called Blue Soul. And you can get that at DaveStriker.com. And Striker is with a Y. Um, and Jared uh, makes some really interesting um, foldable musical equipment and i put a <laughs> i i don't know how else to say it but i did put a crawl on here so that you could see it i had a typo in there and i just wanted to point that out it's jg3tech.com uh very cool very innovative and um i wish you all the best with that and and i hope and i mean this sincerely i hope there's sometime soon when all of us are in a room together and we get to hear your music so Thank you for joining me, and thank you for your wonderful music that you've shared with the world. Thank you, Patricia. Thanks, Patricia. You're welcome. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Good Jared. Good to see you guys. Yes. Yeah. Good to yeah. you. All right. All right. Be in touch. Right. Take care. Yeah. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Bye-bye.